this is Miles Tello bringing you the JD Power Financial Services Intelligence Update for July 2024. This month, we're focused on financial advisor satisfaction. We surveyed 2,500 employee advisors and 1,600 independent advisors to understand their experiences and satisfaction levels with the 15 largest FINRA registered investment firms in the U.S. Kapil Vora leads advisor satisfaction research for J.D. Power and has joined me today to discuss the results, including why employee advisor satisfaction is booming while independent advisor satisfaction is sinking. Welcome, Kapil. Glad to be here. Let's start with a brief overview of the study. Kapil, can you describe what it is, when it started, and how it's been received? Yeah, so this is a long established survey that we've been conducting for over a decade. So we have a long precedence of conducting this type of research. Uh, and in a way, it's a unique study for JD Power. It works as an employee satisfaction survey, right, that tracks and benchmarks financial advisor satisfaction. And the employee advisors rate the firm that they work for. The independent advisors, on the other hand, rate the firm that they are affiliated with. So that's how it works. And it in, in that way, it's different than our typical consumer survey. Got it. And how do we reach the advisors to get their feedback? Yeah, this is another unique aspect of this study. Instead of using online panel sample, we reach out to these advisors using the discovery database. And this discovery database houses information for all the FINRA registered advisors in the US. And we let the advisors take the survey online or even allow them to take the paper survey should they wish to do that. Yeah, so th this is a long standing study with a very proven sample plan. Which investment uh, firms are, are included in, in it? So, yeah, most of the big financial advisory firms in the US are part of this study. But to be in this study, the employee segment firms had to have at least 2,000 advisors working for them, while the independent firms had to have at least 1,200 affiliated advisors. So we are serving all the big firms in the U.S. Got it. So let's talk about this year's results. What, uh, what surprised you most? So satisfaction among employee advisors rose a significant 49 points this year. In contrast, overall satisfaction among independent advisors is considerably lower and reflects a significant year-over-year -year decline. So this is very interesting given that historically, satisfaction among independent advisors have always been higher than among employee advisors. So this is a trendsetter. It is. It jumped out to me in the, in the press release, of course. I mentioned it at the top of the discussion here. Why did this happen? Right. So many factors have driven the gains among employee advisors, including significant improvements in compensation related metrics, the perceptions of technology and the quality of the support that they're getting from their home office. On the other hand, independent advisors are citing leadership concerns and their decline in satisfaction in the firm's leadership for these lower satisfaction scores. So there was also a lot of M&A activity. There was a lot of branding activity on the independent side, which has also caused this decline in the leadership satisfaction for the independents. Got it. Yeah, I guess it's not surprising to hear that advisors don't like change. Uh, any, anybody responding to any of our studies, whether they're consumers, advisors, small businesses, they, they don't like change. But of course, change is necessary. So I'm curious, when you look across all of the firms in the study, um, I know that the answer to this question would vary depending on which firm you're looking at, but is there a common opportunity that these firms share in their efforts to improve uh, advisor satisfaction? Absolutely. So year over year, what we have found is culture and leadership are critical to advisor retention and satisfaction. So yes, compensation, how they are paid is also important, but in the long run, it is the firm's culture and the financial advisor's trust in the firm's leadership is what keeps them engaged with their company. So when we compare advisors committed to staying with the firm versus those who are open to leaving, we see that the biggest difference in their ratings is on culture and leadership scores. 
So that is really the number one aspect that firms could be doing to improve advisor satisfaction. Well, thank you for that answer, Kapil. I have one more question for you today. I'm curious which firm performed best according to employee advisors? And actually, let's ask two questions. Which firm performed best according to independent advisors as well? Yeah, so among employees, Stiefel ranks highest in overall satisfaction for second year in a row, while among independents, Commonwealth ranks highest for an 11th consecutive time. So that's a record setting uh, streak for Commonwealth. And Raymond James ranks second in both employee and independent advisor satisfaction. Wonderful. Kapil, thank you. And congratulations to Stiefel and, and Commonwealth on uh, their performance. So Kapil, thank you very much for joining me today. The J.D. Power U.S. Financial Advisor Satisfaction Study is available now for our subscribing customers. More details are in the post, including a link to our analysis of advisor attrition, which Kapil had mentioned earlier in the discussion. I'll be back in August to discuss findings from our U.S. Credit Card Satisfaction Study, which profiles the experiences cardholders have with over 300 cards from the 19 largest credit card issuers in the U.S. We'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you.